Hey everybody, today I'm going to be installing a socket AM2 processor from AMD. And the installation procedure shown herein is pretty much the same for any modern day desktop AMD processor from K8 or newer, such as from socket 74 through socket AM3+. Plus. And here is the CPU that I'm going to be installing is a AMD Athlon 64X2 3600 Plus CPU. It's a basic dual core processor. And the motherboard pictured is a basic a, um, HP OEM motherboard. And here is what the heatsink looks like. This is your basic run of the mill heatsink. And here's the CPU socket. This is a retention bracket. Let's go and get started. First thing we'll do here is install a CPU. On the socket itself, you'll be locating a triangle, which in this case the triangle is located here. And be careful how you hold your CPU. Be sure to hold it by the edges because you have, on this particular CPU, you have, I believe, 940 pins. And you do not want to bend these, trust me. Because if you're lucky, <laughs> to get them bent straight is difficult. So I'll go ahead and install a CPU. Now in most cases you shouldn't have to force a CPU. It should just drop right in. In rare, rare instances sometimes you may have to slightly push the CPU but do not force. As you see the processor just fell in with its own weight from the heat spreader. Now I'll go ahead and close the lever here to lock the CPU into place. Now we'll go ahead and clean the CPU heat spreader and the heat sink so I can install the heat sink and with thermal paste and stuff. All I need is like a paper towel and some Windex. I recommend alcohol if it's available. And I don't mean beer or wine, I mean um, rubbing alcohol. Stuff you get from the drugstore. Go ahead and clean up our CPU here, the heat spreader. Even though in the video it already looked clean to begin with, it's important to make sure you have the heat spreader perfectly, perfectly clean so that way you don't have um, fingerprints and that sort of stuff on it. Now I'm going to repeat the procedure for the heat sink. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and install some thermal compound to the CPU heat spreader. Now there are several different ways that you can actually install your paste. Um, some people put a big blot in the center and expect it to spread out evenly. In many cases, especially with Arctic Silver 5 thermal compound, which is very, very thick, it doesn't spread across the entire heat spreader. It'll just compound in the center. Now if you have real thin thermal paste that's, um, that flows very easily, yeah, you might get by with putting a dot of paste in the center and spreading it out that way, but um, here's the way that I install thermal paste, and this is basic generic paste. I actually come with a um, IBM T60 cooling fan, just basic thermal compound, and I use this on my basic setups. And of course, if it's anything with extreme overclocking, anything I'm going to be pushing a holder pretty hard, I use Arctic Silver 5. So, anyways, go ahead and apply some paste, and here's how I do it. That right there is all we need, and thing about the syringe here is um, sometimes it'll score it out more than I really want. And the excess will, will get scraped off when I spread out the paste. And go and use a spreader card. You can use a credit card, driver's license, or anything like that. This card here is actually a card that come with a <clears throat> thermal paste kit from Best Buy years ago. Back when they actually had decent thermal compound. 
Well, they still do, but it, I think it used to be a lot better back in the day. Just for an example, this is the um, spreader thing they give you now. It's only good for chipsets, but anyways, let's go ahead and spread this. <clears throat> I mean, the procedure is very simple. You just spread the paste out. <clears throat> all done. That's all we need. Here's the excess on the spreader card. Now I'll go ahead and install the heat sink. Now, of course, one thing I didn't touch on in this video, um, when I installed the thermal paste, I installed the paste to whatever is smaller. For example, the CPU heat spreader or the CPU die. If it's smaller than the heat sink base, um, I install the paste to the CPU. But let's say that the heat sink base is small or a little bit smaller than the heat spreader or the, well, it's never smaller than the CPU die, but let's say the, um, Heat sink base is smaller than the heat spreader. I install a paste to the heat spreader. Let me go and show you an example. Here is a CPU core that has a base that is actually a little bit smaller than the CPU heat spreader. In that case, I'll apply the Thermal paste directly to this, so that way um, there's no excessive leftover. Now collect dust and make a big mess in the future. It's a good thing to consider. Okay, now I'm going to install the heat sink, which is very simple. Just be sure the heat sink itself is in the unlocked position. This is locked. This is unlocked. Now I'm going to install. Just set the heat sink down into the retention bracket and this here is actually a socket um, 754 939 style heat sink but you can use it on socket AM2 or AM3 plus and you can also use um, AM style coolers on socket 754 939 940 because they're basically the same style of brackets Okay, the cooler is now installed and we'll go ahead and plug in the cooling fan which the header is right over here on the motherboard. And tuck the wire down out of the way. Which I probably should have installed the cooler the other direction but it's no big deal. Anyways, the cooler is now installed. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask.